We've had a great week. Um, the, it's really cool to see the, the growth of the young guys that most of the guys are redshirting um, from the first bye week to this week, letting those guys live scrimmage. Um, that, that's been fun, watching those guys have some fun, watching old guys kind of rally around them. Um, we cut some things back with the older guys uh, this week, uh, try to get their legs back. Um, that's one of the things we're going to start doing is modifying practice and cutting back a little bit. Um, I think that was a little bit of issue in the second half last week. Um, so I got to do a better job of managing the roster from that standpoint. But it's been good. It's been good. And I know uh, we're going to have off now Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and get back at it on Sunday. What's your schedule and the coaching staff schedule like? More recruiting or what are you able to do? Yeah, um, we'll, uh, most of the guys will go out Thursday. I think Bob leaves tomorrow. Um, but most of the guys will go out and be on the road Thursday, Friday, and then part of Saturday, and then be back here Saturday um, late afternoon, evening, and then be back in office early Sunday, ready to go, getting ready for Ohio State. Getting a chance to see some of these younger guys in more extended practice sessions the last two of the last three weeks, has it caused you to change your outlook in terms of your yellow, green, red system? Or are any of these guys closer to being a yellow where maybe they were red before? Not really. Um, not really. It's all more based on just our roster that's playing and what happens with them from a health perspective. You know, there's been some real positive. I mean, you look at Noah Bay. Noah Bay's gained 24 pounds since he's been here. Um, it was 275, and the, and the good thing is he's he still looks like he's 250. You know, so he's got a frame that he's going to be able to carry a lot of weight. And as you guys know, the development of those young offensive linemen and some of the other positions um, is going to be really important for us. But um, no, I wouldn't say anybody's changed their status because of that. We're at a point right now; it's going to be more based off of you know what happens to the to the two deep starters. You know, keeping them healthy. You mentioned cutting things back a little bit. What kind of things do you do to cut things back? What kind of things do you have in mind to, to maybe ease those second hand issues? Well, typically, typically um, at this point of the year, we just start cutting back time. So it may be going from five minute periods to four minute periods, and you might not do all of them. But you might say, we're going to take five periods now, and they're going to be four minute. Or you may cut a certain period out. Uh, so like, for example, we usually do two minute um, on Thursdays, I think. And we do ones and twos. We may not go twos. We just may go one group, things like that. So we just kind of start to kind of work it back. And what we've done is we keep records. So every day when I get a practice shell, I get a copy of a practice shell from the last three, four years. And I'll do that a week at a time and look at what I did in years past. And then obviously, our situation here is a little bit different, so you're going to have to modify it even more, which which we've already really done. James, knowing you don't talk about player injuries, generally speaking, when somebody's coming back from a long absence, what must they show to you and the staff before you're comfortable you know, inserting them in the lineup, whether it's practice or a game? Yeah, well, Deef, we've talked about. I'm assuming that's who you're talking about. Anybody. Okay. Uh, I'll use Deef for example because we've kind of already talked about him. One of the things that's been great is these live young scrimmages, we've been able to put Deef in there because it's hard to go from not doing anything to go play a game. So, you know, now he's been able to do drill work, he's been able to go into the live scrimmages, and, and you see him getting more confidence because it's not just the physical aspect, it's the mental aspect of it as well. So, uh, I think that's been really important for us. Um, but I think that's kind of an example. Basically, our guys are with the trainers. And, and we have a medical document that we go over every morning, and that is a guy who's out, a guy who's limited, and then we have an area, basically, he just moved from limited back to full go, um, and then he comes off of that after a day. And then we have another area, it's just guys that we kind of keep an eye on just to be aware of certain issues, but that's kind of how it is. And then once they get off of that, then they come into practice, and it's usually individual, and then individual and maybe group, and then individual group and team, and then you get them in the game. Um, but it's usually, and again, depending on the issue, yeah. you know, if it's just a sprained ankle or if it's a shoulder, I mean, it depends on the issue. Does that, that answer your question? Uh, James, uh, you talked before about, you know, the lack of depth on the offensive line and linebacker. And obviously, that's because of the, the, the lingering effects from the sanctions. How long do you think it is until Penn State and, and your team is, is fully recovered from those sanctions? You know, that, that's hard to say. I think our numbers will get back quicker now because of what's happened the last couple years. But the issue is some positions, depending on, on your approach, whether you go heavy junior college or whether you go high school, um, it, it's, it's, yeah, you might get your numbers back on the offensive line next year, but they're still going to be almost all freshmen and sophomores, maybe, maybe a few juniors. So 
you know, if you look at most programs across the country, um, you usually don't play on the offensive line until your redshirt sophomore year. You know, so I think that's where it'll change. I think our numbers will be back, but we'll still be young. You don't go from being a second youngest team in, in the country to mature overnight. But it'll gradually happen. And then I think the other thing is, um, you know, we're going to be more and more aggressive of playing of playing young guys. I think I think we're just gonna we're just gonna have to do that. Hey, following up on Jeff's hypothetical, I guess we're finding ways to try to sneak around your injury stuff. How far is it? How much of a leap is it from playing in these types of scrimmages to playing in a game? Uh, it, you know, it, it's hard to say that. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure. I think we're close. I think, you know, you guys have all seen he wasn't out of practice when you come on Wednesdays, and then he started to come out of practice, you know, and, and, and doing more and more. But um, I, I think he's getting closer every single day. And you'd, love to, you'd love to see him this week. Um, you know, uh, I don't really completely control that. You know, the doctors make those calls, and the kids are going to make that call. You know, and his family will be a part of it as well. So, But we're getting close. How much does a family, I mean, they usually factor in? Is that kind of, like, what's that process like as far as the doctor clears them versus, you know? Yeah, I, well, I think, I guess what I'm saying is whenever we have an injury, mm -hmm. a significant injury, you know, we pick up the phone and, and Tim Bream calls the parents and keeps them kind of involved, you know, just like you'd want to know if it was your kid. So um, that that's kind of what I mean by that more than anything. And then, you know, obviously, obviously they're talking to their, their kids about kind of where they're at and how they're feeling. and making sure kind of we're all on the same page and ultimately do what's in the best interest of the, of the, uh, of the, of the student athlete. Now, I, I know you can't talk about specific commits and how they're going to help your team, but the NCAA does allow you guys to confirm whether or not you're recruiting someone. So can you just kind of figure up, are you actively, are you recruiting, you know, Miles Hartsfield? I don't think I'm allowed to do it. Yeah, I don't think so. I, Section, yeah. I, I know. I know. Oh, I, I this well, 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 well this, this is what I'd like to do. I'd like you to talk to compliance and let compliance send me an email. For my 17 years, you've never been able to talk about a specific route, recruit or a high school. I've been at high schools before, and media has been out the high, outside of high school, and they want to take my picture in front of the high school. I can't do that. You know, I can, I can say I'm in Pittsburgh. I can say I'm in Phil, uh, Philadelphia, I can say I'm in Harrisburg, but I can't even talk about a specific high school, so I don't know how I can talk about a specific recruit. So if you email Matt and, and he says it's okay, then, then maybe I'll consider it at that point. Okay. Where are you going this, this weekend? I think, I think I'm in Philly this, this week. Is that where you're planning to go before it begins over the week for two weeks? Um, yeah, I would, but that was a separate trip. It, okay. It, it's all usually based on games. So right. in the very beginning of the season, we say these are all the guys that are committed to us, and these are priority recruits, and I'm going to try to get to them. Mm -hmm. And then the problem is, like, we were supposed to go to a, a local game, yeah. and I wasn't able to go to that. And then it, so, so it doesn't always work out perfectly, but um, I'm going to be with Sean Spencer, I think, for Thursday night, all day Friday, and, and most of Saturday. And then we, be back. we be using the chopper or going old fashioned? What do, you, what do you want me to do? Whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, yeah, we'll prob we're probably going to use the, the chopper because I think I'm going to three games, and I think the games are in Philadelphia and Allentown, so I don't know how you do it without that. You've been a big proponent of it. So when I said Philadelphia, I apologize, just threw Allentown out there. I think, now, yeah, now you've just gone everywhere. Yeah, that's part of it too. Most of my time is going to be in, in Philadelphia, but I'm going to be in the Allentown area as well. Information control has been a big thing that you've been a part of, who's injured, not talking about injuries, personnel and whatnot. When you have two losses and bye weeks in between, fans come up with a lot of ways to fix your problems that you've yes, obviously never never thought of. And someone who reads all of this stuff, how do you find that balance to create a climate where people understand where the program is and at the same time maybe stick to the sorts of things that you yeah. don't want to talk about? I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges that I've had since I since since we arrived here is how do we get the fans and everybody excited and engaged and back in the stadium and selling 107,000 out without setting up false expectations as well. Um, and, and when you have a fan base like us, you know, fan is short for fanatical. I mean, they're, they're, they're passionate about Penn State, which I love. And when things are going well, there's nothing better than that. When, you're, when you hit a rough spot, that, that, that can make it challenging. And I think the other thing is, what I've always tried to do is insulate the players from it as much as you possibly can. Um, you know, you deal with it as, as the head coach. But with social media now, it's really difficult to do that. It's, it's really difficult to do that. So um, that, that's the hard part. That's, that's the challenge. And then what you don't want to do is 
you, you don't want to be talking about all these things before the season starts because you're trying to get people excited. And then you don't want to be talking about all these things after a loss because then people think you're making excuses. But you know, we're just going to stay positive. We couldn't be more excited about the direction of the program and where we're going. Um, you know, being successful major college football is tough and it's challenging and it's hard. We're just going to stay positive and keep grinding through it. And I know uh, we'll all like where, where we're at soon enough. Have you considered changing anything about how you present some of this information? I mean, when you're watching the team warm up before Michigan, you can see that Donovan Smith's limping around a little bit. It's not like a secret that he's not 100%. And maybe people don't see that on the broadcast, or maybe they don't see it if they're not at the game. I mean, maybe if they know that and they know the offensive line isn't. I mean, how do you balance yeah. Yeah, guys, I, I'm you know I'm just like the players. I'm just like probably all of you. I'm 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 growing and I'm trying to find the best ways to do things. Um, my first perspective always is on coaching and with the players and what I know other coaches do to try to gain advantages. That's number one. What I'd like to do is get to a point where our fans are just so so supportive of our players and our coaches and our program that they give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, you know, um, I, I don't know necessarily what the right answer is and what the balance is. I know from a coach's perspective what we're trying to do and constantly gain information, and I don't necessarily like to give it out. You know, um, it also can cause some issues because then a guy doesn't play as much one week and people come up with all, all types of theories of why maybe he didn't play as much that week, and it may be because of a sprained ankle. But, you know, we don't talk about those things. Okay, two more. James, you were saying about the information stuff with Ben's question. I'm coming out of right field on this one, but how? What's the process like when you? Because you know you read everything. Who does that? I've read less the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll admit that. I've read less. Uh, but but who like who compiles it for you? Because I imagine you don't just sit there. No. Controlling uh, the yeah, no, it, it's pretty easy. I mean, I usually get in pretty early. I usually get in at least an hour, but with besides everybody, but maybe Bob Shoop. Um, and it's magnified right now because Bob's family is not here. Um, you know, so I usually get in early, and the first thing I do is I get on and I scan, um, you know, articles about Penn State football and find out kind of what's going on. And then I get on ESPN. I want to know what's going on nationally because the other thing we do is ESPN or Sports Illustrated or you know, you know Sporting News or whatever it may be. Because the other thing we do is we constantly pull out articles of issues that are going on in our country in, in this, you know, in our profession. Um, you know, you, you know um, young men that are making poor decisions, and we, I use that in the PowerPoint. So then I send out a mass text. You know, I want these things in our PowerPoint presentation with our players every single day to remind them about making great choices. Um, but no, I usually just kind of do that in the morning. Now, Mike Hazel or some other guys, they might see a business article or a leadership article that I like. Mm -hmm. Usually when I go on the road, I get a travel book, and there'll right. be a couple articles in there. That I think are that are that are pretty good, but I usually do my own kind of looking looking around the internet for stuff. Hey, well, coach, you've been big on uh, you know positive mental attitude, especially given your background and stuff. The last two weeks, I mean, it seems like there might be a little bit of you know frustration building with the offense. Has, has it been a challenge? I mean, I don't want to say a challenge, but you know, have you had to go a little bit deeper to uh, you know? Try to keep those guys, you know, try to preach the positive message to everybody. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, uh, I think you guys have seen since we've been here, we're very optimistic, we're very positive, we're very excited and appreciative about being at Penn State and, and, and where we're going and what we're going to be in the very near future. And that, that's the thing that's exciting is you watch the tape and you come out to practice. We're that close. I know it doesn't always seem that way, but we're that close. Um, so no, but yeah, I mean, is there natural frustration when you're not playing as well as you'd like to from the player's perspective, from the coach's perspective, from the fans' perspective? Yes, yes. And you address that and you say those things are natural, but focusing on that, that negative energy is not going to get us where we want to go. What, what's going to get us where we want to go is here's the problems, how do we solve the problems, and what are we going to do moving forward? And, and that, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. And, and I think our guys understand. I think the other thing is going into the meeting every single day and saying, look, I didn't call a perfect game. I didn't make great decisions. You didn't play a perfect game. Now, what are we all going to do together to, to get where we want to go? And I think that's important that the players see that you're taking responsibility um, as well. We're all, we're all in this thing together. The fans, the media, whether you guys like it or not, um, you know, the, the, the students, the community, you know, the former players, the coaches, the current players, everybody. We're all in this thing together. As long as we all stay positive and keep working, 
we have a very bright future. James, what's your approach with junior college players? Will you be scouring those ranks to maybe make this young roster a little older for next yeah, year? Yeah, we're not, we're not a big junior college recruiting um, program and staff. Um, does that mean that we won't recruit junior college players? No, we'll, we'll look. Um, we got great relationship with Lackawanna. We've known those guys for a very, very long time, um, and other and other junior colleges. So, so we'll look around, and, and there may be one or two players that make sense for Penn State. Um, you know, making sure they're the right fit academically, socially, athletically, the whole package. We got a, we got a great opportunity to offer them. You know, there's no doubt about it. When you look at our roster and you say I could come in and have an opportunity to compete, so we'll look at that. But it's going to have to be the right. It's going to have to be the right situation and the right fit. Thanks, coach. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.